Hear for more on that on set with me. I'm glad to have Kentucky Congressman from its 6th Congressional District, Andy Barr. Congressman, good to see you. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. So I, I speak to a lot of Republican members, and this just has them very, very frustrated because of the complete absence of due process. So what do you expect from Jerry Nadler over in House Judiciary? More of the same, what we saw from Adam Schiff? Yes, unfortunately, and it should frustrate more than just Republican lawmakers on Capitol Hill. It should frustrate every American. It should frustrate every American Republican, Independent, and Democrat who actually believes in due process and the rule of law because this process, as you say, a sham process, has been totally devoid of any semblance of, of fairness whatsoever. I mean, here we have a situation where this so-called impeachment inquiry is moving from the Intelligence Committee to the Judiciary Committee. We have not even seen the report. We've, been not, we've not even been So you as a Republican member has, haven't seen the report? No. They, they have written this report uh, behind partisan uh, uh, closed doors. They have not let us review it. We're not going to be able to review it. And so the Judiciary Committee, uh, members on the Judiciary Committee, they don't know what to expect. They don't know what, uh, what to have there. And, and that's exactly why my colleague, uh, Ranking Member Collins, uh, is... And, and other Republicans are saying to the White House, there's no need for you to participate. Right. Th this doesn't resemble anything that you would find in a court of law where uh, counsel of the, to the defendant would have an opportunity to review the evidence or, or the spin on the evidence is what I expect we will see. I mean, the truth of the matter is when you actually reviewed the testimony and you saw the witnesses, it, there was a lot of exculpatory uh, testimony. I thought more exculpatory testimony than inculpatory testimony. Absolutely. I testimony. mean, certainly, uh, you know, no quid pro quo, right. uh, no bribery, no extortion. And, and these are the Democrats' own witnesses. And Ambassador Sondland, I mean, he said himself what the president told him. No quid pro quo. I want nothing from Ukraine. I just want them to do the right thing. You know, Congressman, when I look at a crime, being having been a former law enforcement guy, you're a lawmaker, you need a victim. And let's the murder. You need a victim. And in this case, the alleged victim would be Zelensky, who says nothing happened here. No pressure. There's no crime, no pressure. No pressure. He says this was not corruption. This was just right. a call. And I, I do believe this was routine diplomacy. And, and beyond that, you know, we know from the, the witness testimony, the Democrats' own witnesses and Taylor and y Yovanovitch and right. uh, uh, all of the witnesses uh, that, that came, uh, 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 Volker, all of these witnesses that came before said no quid pro quo, no bribery, no extortion, uh, no evidence of a high crime or misdemeanor or impeachable offenses. They, yeah. they said that themselves uh, under oath, that there was no evidence. They, of really, they really have absolutely nothing. But what, it, what I think... But let me ask you this real quick. Sure, under sure. the rules of the House... Is there any mechanism by which Republicans can compel Schiff's testimony? Well, I think the I think certainly uh, uh, Ranking Member Collins is going to do all he can. But again, they're the majority. They can, uh, you know, um, Nadler and Schiff. They will deny that request, which also goes to the fact that this is not a fair process. Certainly, right. Schiff is a fact witness. Uh, he's not only, you know, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee. In this case, he was a fact witness because he. Uh, had interaction and communication. He lied about it. I believe he, he had, did as he well. He had communication with the whistleblower. But here's what I think uh, a lot of people are not focusing on. The idea, the, the suggestion that it was somehow improper for this president to withhold aid simply doesn't hold water at all. Not only did the president have the legal authority to withhold aid, to pause aid upon the election of a new government sure. in, in Ukraine, he had a legal obligation to do so. He was, he was doing his job and he was doing it well. No, you know, that, that's what I've said for a long time. Don't we want a president, Republican or Democrat, that's going to look at $400 million of U.S. taxpayer money, going to a country that has a history of corruption and say, hold on a second. Let's make sure everything's okay over there right. before we ship nearly half a billion dollars a few thousand miles away. Yeah, and John, not just uh, a history of corruption, but according to Ernst & Young, the third most corrupt nation on yes, planet Earth. That's right. and, and here's the bottom line is no less than four times in the last five years, the Congress of the United States voted to not just, not just authorize the president, but to, to require the president to impose on the executive branch an affirmative duty to seek and obtain assurances from the government of Ukraine that it was countering corruption. The, in 2014, and I voted for this, and every single Democrat in the Congress, including Pelosi and Schiff and Nadler, they voted for this, the Ukraine Freedom Support Act. And that legislation authorized funds post-Crimea, after the Russia annexation of Crimea, uh, 
authorize funds to be used to counter corruption and to bolster the, the institutions of democracy within the government of Ukraine. And then in 2017, in the National Defense Authorization Act, right. and subsequently in 18 and 19 in the NDAA uh, legislation that was passed in overwhelming bipartisan fashion, Democrats voted for this, required a certification as a condition of providing assistance, military security assistance to the, uh, the government of Ukraine required uh, a certification from the executive branch that Ukraine, the government of Ukraine was making progress in combating corruption. Right. So, so the idea that the, pre the president was out of line or that it was inappropriate for the president to bring up to Zelensky this idea of how are you doing combating yeah. a I mean, real the way The way you describe it, it seems like a mandate. It, it is a mandate. Imposed upon the it's president. It's a congressional mandate. Yeah. So, so here's, here's what this all comes down to. The Democrats are trying to impeach this president for following a law that they voted for. That, that's essentially it, isn't that's it? That's it. And a mandate that they handed down. Exactly. The, the president is the commander in chief. He was executing the law. He was, not, he was not fulfilling his personal political interest. He was carrying out the national interest. And as you said, $400 million of U.S. Money. taxpayer assistance. Right. Don't you think it is in the national interest to seek assurances that, that, that those taxpayer funds are going to be used oh, absolutely. to advance U.S. interests? That's what the president was and, doing. And, and used, and used in, a, in a responsible, honest fashion. Absolutely. Let me ask you this. We have a story up at Newsmax.com. Former Senator Joe Lieberman, pretty fair guy, he says this is the most partisan process he's ever seen. So do you agree with that? And do you think any Republicans in the Senate would actually vote to impeach this president? I don't, because the process has been bad. It's been one-sided. It's been political. So you agree partisan. with former Senator I Lieberman? Yeah. I agree with Senator Lieberman. And uh, Senator Lieberman, in your uh, article, um, pointed out that he voted against the impeachment of President Clinton because of the because it didn't rise in his view to right. a high crime and misdemeanor. What we have here is not only is it not a high crime and misdemeanor, it's the president doing his job. Yeah. It's the president carrying out the pol the foreign policy of the United States uh, to determine whether or not this ally is a reliable ally deserving of U US taxpayer assistance. So this temporary pause of uh, foreign assistance, which is at the core of this investigation or this inquiry, this is the president doing his job and doing it well. And he says to Sondland, Ambassador Sondland, Sondland testifies this, that I just want Ukraine to do the right thing. Are they combating corruption? Are we going to see these uh, instances of corruption like Burisma, a real corruption case in, in, right. in the Ukraine? That is not in the president's personal interest. That's in the U.S. taxpayer interest and our national security interest. And by the way, even Fiona Hill, an adversarial witness to the president, in, admitted under oath that this president has been much tougher on Russia than his predecessor, Obama, in yeah. many respects, yeah. because this president actually provided lethal weapons assistance, javelins to the Ukrainians to counter malign Russian influence much, much tougher on Russia than was Obama. And he did the same with Poland, when Obama pulled those rockets as well. That Absolutely. Yeah, it's Absolutely. very true. Representative Andy Barr, great to see you, Congressman. Great to see you. Good Thanks to be with much. you. Thanks so much.